Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Reducing Variation and Building High Reliability with Personalized Learning. My name is Tom DeSantis from APS, and thank you for taking time today to learn about Gnosis. We have 30-minute presentation planned with additional time and questions and answers at the end. Right now, everyone is on mute, but if at any time you have a question, please type it into the chat box, and I will collect them all at the end for the questions and answers session. In our audience, we have a mix of current Gnosis clients exploring best practices, as well as healthcare leadership from nursing, obstetrics, and risk management, here for the first time to learn how APS is building high reliability. So regardless of your role or experience with APS, we welcome any questions. I want to start by introducing our presenters. Laura Sparkman is the Vice President for Clinical Effectiveness at Advanced Practice Strategies. Laura came to APS after 17 years at Ascension Health, most recently as the Director of Clinical Excellence. There, she developed a perinatal safety program that included Gnosis for OB. Laura has also collaborated with organizations focused on patient safety, including Institute for Healthcare Improvement, Kaiser Permanente, March of Dimes, ACOG, Intermountain Healthcare, AHRQ, to name a few. A registered nurse, Laura holds a Master's of Health Administration and a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. At APS, she works directly with her clients to interpret their Gnosis data. Laura, thanks for leading today's discussion. Glad to be here. Our special guest, Shannon Hartwig, has been a registered nurse since 1994 and has served as a nursing director with a focus on women's and children's services since 2002. She received her MSN degree from Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia in 2011 and holds a National Certification Corporation, NCC, certification in inpatient obstetrics. After joining Lakeland Regional Health in Lakeland, Florida, as the Director of Nursing for Women's and Children's Services in 2011, Shannon provided the leadership needed to launch a formal multidisciplinary perinatal safety improvement program. Shannon continually strives to challenge the status quo to ensure a focus on the importance of standardizing key clinical practices associated with risk of harm to mothers and babies by bringing evidence and best practice to the bedside. Thank you, Shannon, for joining us today to share the Lakeland story. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Laura, at this time, I'm going to hand over the controls to you. Excellent. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's really, um, I'm glad you all are here. Um, this is a great opportunity uh, to learn from a colleague and uh, a peer, Shannon Hartwig, Director of um, Nursing at Lakeland, Lakeland Regional Health. And uh, Shannon has been a, a longtime user of uh, Gnosis, um, one of the APS. Um, products, but really the focus today is uh, we want to talk about reducing variation and building high reliability with personalized learning. Um, uh, here's our agenda for today. Uh, we're going to talk about what is Gnosis, how is Gnosis different, what is the impact of Gnosis, why is education in OB important, and how can a client reduce variation with Gnosis for OB. All of these are, you know, very relevant um, and important topics as we talk about patient safety and improvement work in obstetrics. Um, so APS really um, has two primary um, products, I would say, but, you know, um, stepping outside of, um, you know, products for just a moment, what we've done is really gone to school on trying to understand the issues that clinical leaders are working to address every day regarding nursing workforce and the care teams in high-risk medical specialties such as emergency room teams and obstetrical teams and um, nursing in general. So Prophecy, which is our hiring and onboarding solution, and Gnosis, which is the education and risk reduction solution, really uh, go across the continuum and kind of from the time the nurse enters the workforce from being a new grad all the way to their experienced and so between Gnosis, between Prophecy and between Gnosis, we're covering that continuum and ensuring you're as leaders in healthcare getting the best, the brightest and engaged and, and then focusing on re retaining those individuals and then educating and making sure that they have the evidence-based practice required to deliver safe patient care. And we do that through Gnosis, which is what we're really gonna be talking about today. Um, uh, it's an assessment-based um, driven education. So this is really how it works. Um, 
We first, we are measuring your proficiency, which is through this assessment-based education, where we're measuring two primary variables, knowledge and judgment. And it's a standardized assessment. Uh, nurses take a, the same assessment. Providers take a slightly different assessment. And then um, what is generated is a personalized and prioritized learning path. So you're only getting the content that you need based on the results of your assessment. So this is not only uh, uh, relevant evidence-based content, but it's uh, exactly what you need and what you need. So it's efficient and effective um, and motivating. And then uh, the third and very unique component of Gnosis is that it generates analytics. So really for the first time in our industry, we're actually able to measure improvement and or uh, baseline data to improvement um, uh, for any individual and for any, any clinical team. Um, I'm gonna keep moving through here. So speaking of the analytics, Gnosis really measures um, the improvement um, and or the variation. So this is an example, this is real client data, and I wanted to share this with you. This is um, on the left, you're seeing um, assessment one, and on the right, you're seeing assessment two. Um, you can very quickly get a visual picture of improvement from assessment one to assessment two. And I'm just gonna circle this with my cursor as I have control over here. Each one of these orange boxes represents individual hospitals and their average score for nurse data. Well, this is um, nursing data. And then in assessment two, you can see that every hospital is moving up into the upper quadrant, which represents the highest scores in both knowledge which is down here, and judgment. Um, and this is a typical standardized report. This is available through Gnosis, but it gives you insight and into um, improvement, which is really what we wanna see when we're delivering education um, to our clinicians, uh, whether it's nurses and or providers. Um, I think what we'd like to do here is just take a quick moment and do a quick poll if we can here. And the question is, do you have a means to measure or quantify the impact of education? So as participants, if you could just click on either yes, no, or I don't know, and um, Tom will um, share the results with us um, at the end of the presentation. We have seen um, measurable improvement. Gnosis um, for our clients, and this is really something that's been emerging. Gnosis has been in the market for about uh, three years. We're seeing um, improvement and clients are reporting impact to clinical outcomes and reduced risk. Um, we have one particular client here to the left, um, Beta Healthcare, actually um, has seen a significant decrease, 55% avoid, avoided claims exposure um, with using um, Gnosis for OB products. And then we are seeing large regional children's hospital improve their outcomes by 40% um, by using the obstetric hemorrhage program. Um, it's again, assessment-based, learning occurs, and then you're managing you know, a dashboard of clinical outcomes. And this organization was able to see a decrease and masses transfusion protocols, essentially codes, um, which is a real impact to life, harm, and there's also a financial component to this as well because you're reducing blood utilization overall, which I think we all know is um, really an expensive resource in healthcare today. So these are just two um, examples uh, that we wanted to make sure that we shared with you today. Obstetrics, one of the things that we know is variation equals risk. So if you look, keep in mind that scatter plot that we had just showed from the assessment time one to time two and the variation among those hospitals, imagine a healthcare system um, that has that variation. And as a clinical leader, you wanna know how do I get those hospitals that are in the very lowest quadrant up to the uh, high scores and knowledge and judgment with those other hospitals. And this is an example here from CRICO, which is Harvard's um, risk um, group, but on what they look at for annual benchmarking. 
you know, what are the most common um, allegations and what contributes most to OB claims? So, um, Shannon, I'd like to get your thoughts on this. I mean, some of this is, you know, as it's listed here, delay in treatment of fetal distress, improper performance of operative vaginal delivery. How does this equate to what's happening at Lakeland? Well, I would say that as we did our initial gap analysis prior to launching our perinatal safety program here, these were themes that we definitely identified both in the literature as well as looking at our own internal data and helped us to prioritize some of our efforts to include our work with electronic fetal monitoring um, through our perinatal safety program. Okay, great. And then um, just really moving on to this, the next, you know, it's really become a national initiative, OB safety. I, I travel across the country, I get to the opportunity, and even in my prior role with Ascension Health, had the opportunity to collaborate with a lot of organizations nationally, but, you know, ACOG uh, committed to patient safety and quality and AHRQ and the Joint Commission, really everyone is, um, uh, you know, a, uh, a call to action on perinatal safety. And um, I'm going to, uh, again, Shannon, wondering how this has influenced your work at Lakeland. Right. Well, I think, you know, having perinatal safety as a focus is really a non-negotiable component of care and obstetrics these days, and really looking at a very multifaceted approach to that, that really requires support and engagement from all levels of the organization, um, and definitely including strong support from executive leadership. And those are some of the factors that, I mean, we're really fortunate to have, I feel, at Lakeland Regional. Um, is just really having that strong level of support and engagement. Excellent. And I just, I wanted to point out, you know, within these two statements from, you know, creating a culture of safety and um, a commitment uh, across the care team, and that's one of the, I think, unique components about Gnosis is that it's relevant for providers, certified nurse midwives, um, uh, labor and delivery nurses, the entire care team, um, and that's really what you have to have everybody engaged and working as a team, um, regardless of your education and or role. That's what really creates a good culture of safety. And then in addition to that, the communication components, communication continues to be um, touted by Joint Commission as one of the most significant factors that uh, create a good environment for patient safety or is you know some of the reasons why harm occurs in patients today and and i I'm, i know you're going to talk about that um so i'll go ahead uh shannon and hand it back over to you okay thank you laura um so kind of uh just to give a little bit of a background to um, the work that we've been doing here at lakeland regional um, really wanting to look at some of the core tenets of perinatal safety um, and some of the things that are um, often cited in the literature as being things to really keep um, front of mind in this work. And one of them really is that um, striving toward high reliability. Um, you know, we all want to provide the right care to the right patient every time. And it's not going to happen just by chance. It really is the result of having a very carefully planned strategy. We need to engage the stakeholders um, and we need to be really united around the same goals and providing the best outcomes for mothers and babies. And then again, that top or that um, unwavering support from our executive leadership and how critical that is in this work. Um, another concept certainly is standardization. And really standardization has been recognized as the hallmark of safe patient care. Um, in really looking at those key clinical practices that are associated with increased risk of harm to mothers and babies and um, standardizing with evidence to ensure that we are improving quality, that we're promoting that reliability and patient safety, and that that best evidence and guidelines should really serve as the foundation of the care that we provide. And one of my colleagues um, here in Florida made the statement, you don't vote on a standard. And I think, you know, just always being reminded about that, we may vote on how we incorporate that evidence into the care we provide within our organizations, but we don't vote on whether or not we should 
incorporate that standard into the care we provide. Um, and then the last concept really um, normalization of deviance or slide to failure. And this is often cited, you know, we see it in the literature, you know, typically moms and babies are pretty healthy. And even when we do drift from what is best practice or what the evidence says, often there's no permanent adverse outcome that is, that is a result, um, even if we are practicing contrary to that best evidence. Um, however, I think we really have to challenge ourselves to say, you know, how do we want to define our practice? And do we want evidence and standards to really be the foundation of the care we provide, or are we comfortable with just playing the odds and waiting till we have that bad outcome before we step back and say, hey, we really need to look at this. We're not practicing according to that evidence or those standards. Uh, and I think your comments are spot on, Shannon. Um, I think, you know, organizations that um, are challenged with, you know, physicians and nurses that are doing different programs or um, resistance from a particular, you know, group of providers, as an example. Um, I think these are really great talking points for the organization and a hallmark of high reliability, right, to get uh, the team uh, focused on what's right for the patient. So um, these are um, really fantastic uh, comments. I'm going to keep moving us on here. Okay. So our perinatal safety uh, program was launched in January of 2012, and this is kind of the, the goals or the focus of that program, really looking at improving safety, quality, reliability, and efficiency within our perinatal services. The, um, our perinatal safety program has quality initiatives that focus on decreasing that incident of, the incidence of birth trauma, enhancing our overall culture of patient safety and teamwork, and really, again, standardizing those key clinical processes by bringing evidence and best practice to the bedside. So this just gives you an overview of the work that we've done, the work that we're currently doing, and some of our upcoming focuses as well. Again, this is very, you know, this work is, is it's kind of unending. Sometimes it feels like you're trying to boil the ocean. But, I mean, there's just so much work in this arena. Um, within our phase one of perinatal safety, um, one of those topics that we really looked at was our electronic fetal monitoring. And each of these areas of focus, we have uh, deployed project teams to really look at them, um, to look at the evidence, to look at, you know, really bringing those recommendations of how we can incorporate the evidence into the care we provide and look at how we're going to measure how we've accomplished that. And so they're all very um, multidisciplinary with representation from all of those key stakeholders, as we mentioned before. So the goals of the EFN project team um, was really about making sure that we were providing optimal outcomes for the mother and the newborn infant by incorporating that standardized EFM definition, interpretation, and management and having a standardized methodology for interdisciplinary EFM competency validation and maintenance. And so this just kind of goes over the project plan of really how the team recommended that we do that. Um, they did start by having kind of an EFM kickoff event um, where we had all of our physicians and nurses present together and really to kind of get people engaged in the work that we were doing, kind of create that compelling story as to why this was important um, and just kind of get us on the road in this work. Um, and then at that point, that's where we really incorporated Gnosis. We had all of our LND RNs complete a baseline assessment, and then they had three months to complete their individualized learning path. We did accelerate that for those that we identified. We had a few that were really scoring in that lower quadrant, um, but otherwise really monitored and make sure that they completed that in that three month window. And subsequent to that, we had our team complete it annually thereafter. So at this point, they have completed three assessment and learning path um, sequences. And we did strongly encourage our providers to participate. We had about 25% so far. This continues to be an area that we're working toward uh, strategies to have even a higher level engagement from our providers. For our new labor and delivery RNs, we did 
you know, we wanted to kind of make sure that they were starting with that basic knowledge and training. So they do complete the APS basic fetal monitoring training during their orientation. Once their orientation is complete, they have three months to complete the learning modules within Gnosis. And then within six months of completing their orientation, they complete their assessment and then have that same three month window to complete their learning path. We also did incorporate Miller & Miller's interpartum fetal heart rate monitoring management decision model into our electronic health record um, and really looked at that as another way of providing resources um, to the clinicians at the bedside, especially in management of the category two tracing. We do quarterly strip reviews. We do annual EFM grand rounds and certainly encourage certification in electronic fetal monitoring. Well, Shannon, I was just going to add that um, I love um, really how you've laid out your new L&D um, training program for the new nurses, right? Because um, we get that question, and which is, you know, when is the right time to give this assessment to those new grads? And I'm just wondering, I mean, can you just talk a little bit about, uh, how, you know, what are the results or how are you, how are the new nurses feeling about kind of that orientation program? And are nursing managers getting what they want out of those new nurses? Yes, I would say training? that definitely we have seen that, that we've received good feedback from that. We wanted to make sure to help them kind of lay the foundation, if you will, before just having them do their assessment so that, you know, um, they would just have that confidence. Um, you know, obviously a new nurse to labor and delivery has a lot that they need to um, consider a lot to learn. Um, and so we really wanted to be intentional about at least laying that foundation prior to the assessment. Certainly they have participated in the annual assessments thereafter. And as you'll see on some slides coming up, kind of our data um, as it relates to, you know, how effective that has been um, with our team. So I, I feel like for us, it's been, it's been a good structure for them as they're onboarding. And one other question, uh, and then I'll move us along here, but um, in the very last bullet, the certification encouraged, um, how do you um, monitor that and, and how is that working? We have our nurses, um, obviously, they submit, because um, we actually, um, when we have certifi certified nurses, they do get an additional um, kind of amount in their pay for being certified. So as an organization, we really promote that in that way. Um, so they certainly submit their certification um, status, you know, to human resources. So we're able to monitor it that way. Um, but I think the piece for us that just reflecting back on what our previous structure was prior to this work with perinatal safety and prior to really bringing Gnosis to the table as part of what we do is that, you know, you can have a nurse be certified and that's it definitely a very valuable thing, but how can we really assess to have that confidence that we're identifying where those gaps or those needs are and that we're actually seeing that measurable improvement. And so I think having the Gnosis component there really helped kind of close that loop for us more than what we had had in the past. So I've moved us on here to your, uh, to your data, Shannon. Yeah. So this, um, this slide kind of reflects our initial baseline assessment that we did, and it is looking at our kind of um, overall average for our facility there in the orange box as compared to the APS database. So as Laura mentioned earlier, certainly we wanted to be in that upper right quadrant, and we were excited that, you know, our initial assessment kind of revealed that that's where we were. Um, but as you'll see in the next slide, we still felt like we certainly had um, some opportunity. This slide shows all of our nurses within Lakeland Regional Health that took the assessment and, and they're reflected by those green dots on the slide. And then our facility average again in the orange square. So again, the average in the upper right quadrant, that was great. The one thing that we saw, however, is there was quite a significant amount of variation within our scores. And we know that, you know, variation um, increases risk. So we really wanted to hopefully move that forward and reduce that variation. 
So on the next slide, uh, this is uh, our assessment two. So now we're at year two in this process. Um, and the assessment certainly revealed a significant improvement in our overall scores, both in knowledge and in judgment, as compared to the APS database. So we were really excited to see that improvement. You know, you, you invest the, the resources and the time into that assessment, into that training, and does it make a difference? And we really felt like, um, based on these results, that it absolutely does. And then even more exciting in this slide, again, this is all of our nurses that took that second assessment and our facility average. And one thing that really stood out here to us is the significant reduction in variation that we saw. So we really shifted um, our nurses, you know, they're clustered closer together and they all shifted up into that upper right. Um, we still had a few folks that were outliers and we certainly um, kind of worked with them individually to develop plans to help support their, them in their learning needs and really looked at um, making sure that we were addressing the areas that were identified in their assessment um, to give them that knowledge and, you know, help to support them as well. So kind of um, the next steps for us. So when we actually started with APS and with Gnosis, we, we only had the Gnosis for EFM um, when we signed on. Um, I've heard of us referred to as a legacy client because we've been doing this work for a while now. Um, but for us, because of the, how powerful our data is and kind of telling our story, it helped us to create that compelling story for our team here to the value of really taking on that whole OB suite for Gnosis, which, you know, all of these topics really do align to a lot of the work that we're doing with perinatal safety. So we are actually in the process right now of kicking off the hypertensive disorder in pregnancy Gnosis assessment um, with our team, both on labor and delivery and mother baby, and we're really excited about that. Um, and really looking at, you know, taking advantage of the full um, suite that is available now with Gnosis. Great. And then um, I just wanted to share also that um, in terms of kind of supporting supplemental, you know, and using a supplemental learning, um, we actually have another um, program called Clinical Pearls. And so, as, as you can imagine, um, I'm just going to go back one slide because I wanted to show the variation, you know, among um, the nurse, just as an example. But let's say you have somebody that's uh, uh, less than the average on knowledge, but higher in judgment. Um, on the, so here's an example. And if you go back and you look at, you know, their data, maybe that uh, for that particular individual, they might have a need for category two. And these uh, clinical pearls are about 30 minute case based uh, modules that really focus the uh, end user, whether it's a provider or a nurse, a certified midwife, on these very specific supplemental learnings. So, so Tom, I want to uh, turn it back over to you. Uh, Shannon, thank you. I think this you did a fantastic job really of um, showing um, the Lakeland Regional Medical Center and Lakeland Regional Health perinatal safety journey and program. Um, you know, as I look back and my observations, it's a very comprehensive program. You've been focused on it for a very long time and your results um, for all the things that you're doing with Gnosis being kind of a foundational component of that are really, you know, kind of bearing that fruit. Um, uh, in, two, in terms of the quick poll, the, the responses are, um, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag here. We have about 30% said, yes, we are, uh, we have to uh, measure or quantify the impact, 43% no, and the other, another 30% saying, I don't know. A few questions have come through. Um, the first one, Shannon, you may have actually answered it in part. Uh, someone asked, when you do find someone that is performing lower and then the, the personalized learning path, perhaps on the second assessment, they stay in that lower quadrant. What, what does your organization do to help those people succeed? Well, what we have done is we've really kind of worked with those individuals a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we do have a perinatal safety coordinator here as well, and really recognizing that people do have different learning styles and um, 
kind of assessing with that individual really what is going to be the best strategy for them to be able to address those gaps um, in a manner that is as effective as it can be for them. And so some of that has been through some one-on-one -on -one work that our perinatal safety coordinator has done with them, um, you know, looking at other um, methods for education, um, doing case studies with them or strip reviews, that kind of thing. And, and we've actually, with, we've had a few um, folks that from assessment one to assessment two seem to stay kind of in that lower left quadrant. And with that, you know, that one-on-one -on -one focused attention, we actually expedited the, um, when they completed their next assessment and learning path, and, and we did see improvements. So, it, you know, it's something that we definitely want to make sure that we are focusing efforts on that um, and identifying those individuals. Terrific. Someone has asked, it was in reference to the, um, the improvement slide with Texas Children's, and the massive transfusion protocols. Are you seeing, even anecdotally, are there any improvements in practice? Um, absolutely. I mean, I, and I think I could speak to that in a lot of different ways. I mean, certainly when we look at the metrics that we are measuring, whether it's the perinatal you know, care measures through Joint Commission or other metrics, we've definitely seen improvements there. But also just um, anecdotally and talking with our team, you know, it used to be when we started this work, um, we had kind of varying levels of participation maybe. Um, and, and we're at a point now where I have physicians coming to me saying, what's next? What are we gonna focus on next? Or coming to me and saying, we need to look at this, or we need to look at that. And um, it's really become part of the culture and the expectation. Um, and, and in talking with, uh, again, members of the medical staff, our anesthesia team, um, saying how, you know, really they, they almost describe pre-perinatal safety, I've heard it described as the wild, wild west, <laughs> you know, where now the culture is just the expectation is, is that we incorporate evidence into practice. And so that, that's yeah. been very rewarding. That's great, Shannon. I mean, I think you're bringing up a really important point around kind of the culture of change, too. I, I mean, we, you know, interact with a lot of organizations across country and many times we'll hear about you know the resistance to change and or they're you know concerned about um, you know how can we do this how can we get the whole team on board to do this but I think what you're describing is once you start you can never really go back you just keep moving forward and um, and it's growing right I mean I think you've even increased your participation level um, with providers over the years too. To any other questions, Tom? Yeah, I have one more. How is your organization encouraging or making it more attractive for your, your providers to participate in this with you? Is there anything concerted that you're doing across the board or is it just a building up that culture? Well, um, we definitely have representation from all of our medical staff groups within our steering committee with perinatal safety. And, and also on the project teams. And we really try to make that as you know, workable for them as possible. So you know, on a project team, they may not be able to attend all the meetings, but we are intentional about seeking them out, updating them, getting their input. Um, and so you know, realizing that they're trying to balance a lot, um, but then also giving them that recognition as being part of that project team. We've also tried to really make communication a priority. So even when something is approved through steering committee, once the team has recommended, you know, a specific um, method for incorporating the evidence, we have a very formal process for comment from all of our medical staff, so that you know our staff, the, the providers feel that their voice is heard, and that we're going we're going to fully vet any concerns or. Um, you know, recommendations that they might have. Terrific. And one last question, and actually, Laura, this, uh, you may be able to answer this. Based on the success with Gnosis for OB and obstetrics, are there other Gnosis products uh, available? This, is, this came from a risk person. Okay, yes, absolutely. Uh, we do have an emergency medicine program. We have um, high-risk chest pain, high-risk abdominal pelvic pain, and communications in the ED. We're also getting ready 
to release an onboarding program for nursing. And we're really, um, I had mentioned earlier, um, you know, really trying to answer the questions that clinical leaders are concerned with every day with, um, you know, the workforce and keeping and, uh, you know, the best and the brightest and making sure that our teams are delivering safe care uh, for those high-risk medical uh, specialty areas, and that includes obstetrics, emergency medicine, and medical surgical nursing. Um, so, uh, a lot of opportunity in there. And then, of course, on the on the pro that's that's the Gnosis products, but with the um, you know, that's the assessment-based personalized learning um, with the analytics, and then of course the, the privacy component. But um, yeah, so that, I, that's how I would answer that, Tom. Are there any other questions before we close out? Yeah, Laura, Laura I'll just add as the, uh, as the, okay. the publicist for EPS, hot off the press, um, we're going to be releasing a nursing triage course as well in the emergency department, um, which looks at, you know, the five levels of, uh, of assessment and triage. So that's another thing coming up, too, that, that has been okay. actually by that we developed with our client base. At this time, Laura, I wanted to thank you for your expertise in helping drive this uh, webinar. And Shannon, thank you. Um, you know, we've heard your story a couple times internally, and we're really glad that you were able to, to join us today to share it with everyone on the call. Um, we look forward to hearing more from you as you continue to assess and continue to, um, you know, roll out the different courses uh, and analytics that come with those. So we'll be, we'll be watching you closely and your success down there at Lakeland. So thank, thank you, you everybody. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you, everybody. Take care.